Hey guys, how's it going? Borderliner, not to be confused at all with Border Town, because they're not at all similar, they're just both Nordic series, they're both called Border something, and they're both called that for the same reason. Otherwise, they're very easily distinguishable, alright? Anyway, Borderliner is the Norwegian one, in the original language it's Grenseland, and it is set in Norway, it is, obviously, it is on the border of Norway and Sweden. The language spoken is almost entirely Norwegian, a few characters speak Swedish, which is a mutually intelligible language, and as far as I remember there is no English, so if you're learning Norwegian, first of all, pravall, good choice, uh, and second of all, this series is for you. Get on with it! But as a series, it's not one of the stronger Nordic ones. It's also not for you if you're looking to continue down the same line as The Killing, The Bridge, or Trapped, no. This starts like that, but quickly becomes something quite different. This has more of a feel of the small town and consequences of choices and everything spiralling a little bit out of control, and it's also a bit of a study of broken families. This story reminded me more of something like Gone Baby Gone or Mystic River, both by the same author. It's got much more of that feel to it. It had potential, I just don't think it really reached it. The problem here was the writing, and in particular, the writing of the characters. I don't feel like I was well introduced to the characters enough to be shocked angered, saddened, or anything else by choices they made or things that happened to them. And to be honest, it's a bit of a recurring thing with Netflix. Netflix thinks that they've identified the formula to a story. You do X, and then you do Y, and then this is revealed, and then the last thing to happen is that we need to see Z. The problem is, that does not work if we don't care about the characters. This is where something like RVK Studios Trapped gets 95%, and Borderliner instead gets a 20%. There is very little in Trapped Season 2 that is actually better than Borderliner. Many of the same elements are present, except that in Borderliner, we don't care about the characters, the characters just aren't interesting. What we have instead is a checklist of personality traits or features that are supposed to make the character more interesting. For example, that he's gay. That doesn't make him more interesting, it just makes him gay. In fact, in this case, I feel like it made him less interesting, because there was some pretty clear tension that I could feel going on between these two characters, and what I would like to have seen is a whole season stretched out of them dancing around the fact that they're actually kind of into each other, sort of like a murderous Norwegian version of Jeff and Britta from Community. Then there's the story itself. It's sort of refreshing, in that, unlike the killing, we don't spend a ridiculous amount of time wondering about the same mystery. We actually start to find out what happened in increasing detail as this series moves throughout its relatively short eight episodes. So it's more about the chaos that ensues rather than a whodunit kind of scenario. It's a bit different, but it's very half-hearted. It's as if they wanted to make a fully outward and forward spiralling plot, where everything just goes more and more chaotic. But they felt like that it was against the tradition of Nordic Noir, which generally moves inwards towards a single event and towards a single mystery. So they end up trying to do both at the same time, and neither of them really work. So whenever we're wanting to see more outward spiralling chaos, we instead get, say, a flashback to before the series began, that answers some question that I don't think anyone was really asking. I was sort of thinking, I don't really care where the car came from. Having said all that, this series still does retain a very competent Nordic feel. I felt at home watching this series, whereas something like La Treve from Belgium is trying so hard to be like Nordic Noir, and it just isn't. It doesn't come naturally to those producers. This series, Borderliner, feels at home and like it's speaking its native language to be Nordic. On that note, there was some very decent cinematography, and there's good acting from almost all of the cast. I felt like the families and their brokenness was very believable, I also felt like the characters, especially those who make some really questionable choices at times, were convincing enough that I could see where they were coming from when they were making those choices. But we definitely needed to see more of Annie Kern, played by Ellen Dorrit Peterson. I don't know what it is about her, but she has this on-screen presence that you don't find just everywhere. Maybe it's her deep-set Norwegian eyes. 
I don't know, but she needs more screen time and she needs more good characters written for her. Get on it, Norway. So guys, sadly, I'd probably say that you should give this one a miss. Unless you're learning Norwegian or Swedish, or unless you're like me and you absolutely need to see everything Scandinavian ever, I just don't think there's enough quality here to make all the other just okay bits worth your time. Guys, if you came here looking for the review of the Finnish series Border Town, I do also have that one, so see my other videos. Otherwise, see my other videos anyway, because talking about foreign language series and movies is what I do, and I also talk about foreign languages and how to learn them. It's my thing, I love doing it, and thank you so much to all the people who have subscribed and left positive comments since I started doing this regularly a couple of months ago. It's been super helpful. I love you guys, thank you so much. Wherever you are, whatever language you call your own, I hope you really enjoyed this and found it helpful. Or vi snakkar